Ciao. Buona domenica, everyone. Happy Sunday. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Or whatever day you're watching, we hope you're having a great day. We just had a tornado here, uh, rain, wind, but we're here. And we're here to talk to you all about Sicily. 21 days of straight sunshine. So her and I says, geez, let's go do live chats, right? <laughs> Ever since we started it, things are floating by our window. It's just unbelievable. But we're resilient. Right? We have ways around it, right? Yes, we, we have do. a really, really, really special guest today. Tom Zappla is going to be joining us in just a minute. But first, you know what we did past yesterday? We put up our Christmas tree and Christmas decorations, and it was a lot of fun. It's a multicultural Sicilian, Hungarian, American, some Chinese ornaments in yeah, there. <laughs> right. Hey, speaking of, can I, can, I bring, can I give a housekeeping thing too? Yeah. Seven years ago today. No, but not yet. That story is coming soon. That story is coming. Okay. Hold that story. All right. But first, right. today is also Advent, right? And Today's the first all, day of Advent. So all the nativity scenes. We went to the mall the other day and all the nativity scenes. Nativity scenes. Nativity scenes. And you. how else are they called? And when did they start those? In the 13th Principe. century? No, that was started actually. St. Francis of Assisi, right? Can I explain right? the story before yeah. we talk about All right, listen. The commandment said you can't uh, worship false idols because it went back to Moses when they tried to worship that horse thing okay so when they make the commandments he says you can't do that and that went all the way up until the time from saint francis oh, in the middle see. ages yeah Don't what happened century. was one day saint francis went to the pope he says hey can i get please get permission to you know build a you know little manger with uh, with jesus baby yeah. jesus and the mother and so forth and put it in a cave over in, in naples or wherever it was and the pope finally said yes so after that day Boom, we had nativity scenes. But you know what the big difference is between the uh, United States and here? Right. Is nativity? They don't usually don't display the infant Jesus until right. Christmas Eve. So uh, we walked by a bunch of them yesterday. And all this, you know, I thought maybe someone from Lawrence was there taking Jesus, you know, bringing him back and selling him. There the we go. But on New Year's, <laughs> uh, on Christmas Eve, they'll all be, they'll all be putting, them up, putting him back. All right. Where are you watching from today? Leave us a comment in the chat. I want to say hello to Jim Ingram, Joe and Sue Sione are here. Maria Vivian is here. Ciao, everyone. All right. You ready? Yeah. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Presenting the famous co-host of the Sicilian Corner and also author. And look at that. Aren't they brothers? Look at them. You have the nice hats on. Hey, Aren't Al, they? can I say something? What? You know, if you guys really want a phenomenal show, a phenomenal show. Can you hear me all right, by the way? Is my audio okay? Everything's fine. If you want a phenomenal show, you should have pay-per-view before you go on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Char I'm telling you, it's a it's a home run. Charge ten bucks. People can come on before fifteen minutes bef seen, huh? before before you go on the air. I tell you what, man, pay per view. I would I would pay for that. It what was, was it entertaining? Right? It was it was hugely. Hell, I never knew though. I got to be honest with you. I never knew you could speak in that kind of a language. Wonderful, wonderful. I never swear. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. Can I tell Can I you? Can answer his question? No, wait. Oh, come on. Do you know what today is? Yeah, keep, keep him out. Is he out of the camera right now? Yes. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> I'll go like this. <laughs> All right. Listen you can make, to me. If you want to keep him in, you can make me smaller. Okay. Listen to me. Today is a very important day, everyone. It's a huge day. Not only first day of Advent, but today, November 29th, 2013, Tom Zappala, I filled in for you, co-hosted with Mike Lamazzo and your I remember radio that. Show. I remember that. Today, the first guest was Alfred Zappala. Can you believe it? And seven years later, you are one of our first guests to come oh, on. Good. And ever since that day, seven long years ago, your ratings went up and up and up. I, I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> Now, is my hat? You you made a comment about my hat being made. Wait, I didn't finish making the comment. No, now, you made you made a comment look about it. Brother, look at my brother's hat a second. Look at stare at it and stare at mine. What's the difference? You may add. I I can tell you. Wait a minute. You could talk after me. Mine is made in Italy. Right. My brother's that hat is either made by the J A Pan Company <laughs> or the C H Ina Company. Honest to God, you know where this was made. 
You know where this hat was made? Where? Ireland. Bangladesh. Ireland. It's an Irish skull. It's a. It's an Irish cap. Af- actually. I like it. It looks good on you. It looks great. Yeah, I really bought good. it. I bought it in Newburyport, Mass, at a little uh, uh, English Irish store. Cost me you know seventy-five what, large. Seventy-five large for that hat. Yeah. All right, you know what people are saying, Tommy? You guys look like twins. They do, do a little bit. No, no, uh, hold on. That's bull. Look at him. He looks Let a me... little puffy. Look how puffy he looks compared to All me. All right, I am the moderator right I'm now. Sorry. I'm the moderator, okay? So first I'm of all, I'm going to read off a few more names. Lydia is here, too, coming to uh, for a month this fall. If all goes well, we hope it all goes well as well. Uh, Jennifer Peterson is in the oh, house. Jenny, how are you, sweetheart? Ciao, everyone. All right, so let me start our talk, okay? And Tommy, you came to Sicily. Was that a couple of times? I came to Sicily three different times. Three different times. And I want to know what some of your favorite memories are of coming here to Sicily. Well, my favorite memory is I, uh, I, as many of our viewers and listeners know, I have rheumatoid arthritis. And on my first trip down there, my brother Al, being the religious zealot that he is, invite, invited me to come down. And we went to the wonderful church of St. Alfio uh, in, in Tricastani. And I came there for a miracle that God would help me overcome this rheumatoid arthritis. So I... There was a, a line going in, in the back of the church through the wall of miracles, the hall of miracles. And I said, you know something? I'm gonna get I'm gonna go th- and, and get the holy water. Cause it said, you know, Banya, it's you know, it said holy, you know, I thought it was the holy water. So I got in line and the line is inching through the wall, the hall of miracles, and I'm in line literally for about 20, 25 minutes. And Ellen and Al were waiting for me. So as, as I'm going through the line, I finally get, finally get to where I'm supposed to be. It was the freaking men's room. <laughs> I, I, was, I was standing in line for the men's room. And I just looked, shook my head, laughed, and stepped out of line. But that was, uh, that was an interesting. Did you no. get a miracle? Yeah. Did what? You get a miracle? Well, what about some of the sights, the sounds, the foods? Well, the feast, the, my first... Uh, 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 encounter my first trip to the uh, to the feast in Tricastani, uh, the St. Alfio, the Feast of the Three Saints. That was very emotional. I, it was great. Obviously, uh, many people know that I'm very involved with the organization here in the, in the States. Our grandfather was one of the five founding members in, in the United States, brought it from Italy. So the St. Alfio, the Feast of the Three Saints has always been a big part of the fabric of my life. Recently, I've taken a step back, but for 35, 40 years, I was very heavily involved with it. So attending the feast in Trekestani was uh, it was a wonderful experience. Different, different than ours here, or ours is different than theirs, but it was a great experience. So that was a highlight. Another highlight was Al taking us up to the town of St. Alfio. Uh, mm-hmm. That was beautiful. That that's that was just I fell in love with that town, and we okay. met some people. They're great people. We met some people there. There was a little guy that owned. Is that bakery still there, Al? Across. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. the guy that owns yeah, that bakery. Somebody in Memphis, Tony. Right. It, yeah. It, we yeah. we made friends with him, and every time we came, he always sent a box of pastry back to the states with us for his yeah. cousin in, in Medford, and he'd come to my yeah. office to pick it up. So those are that's my favorite he memories. Yeah. He used to have good. He still has good stuff, by the way. Tommy, you know what's interesting, too, that I went to the Feast of St. Alfio in Lawrence, and I interviewed you and a bunch of other people, Mike Lomazzo, uh, even before I came to Sicily. And I was also very moved at how different, how more spiritual, more religious uh, the event was here. I mean, it, it was. It is. It is. It, you know, I, 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 think, I, think, I think what's happened is and that's a very good point esther i think what's happened here is as that first generation i mean those were the real true religious people the event now don't get me wrong it's still a very solemn religious event for many people but there are, there are a large segment of people that look at it as a uh, a festival you know what i mean yeah. the 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 uh 
the religious acts aspect is actually secondary to some people. To many, it isn't. Us and you know a lot of our friends and relatives. And I would say it's probably 50-50, Al. 50% uh, are there for the entertainment, the rides, the food. And then 50% are there for those plus the spiritual uh, component. I like to go to the Feast of Lawrence just to see who died from year to year. Yeah, they yeah. in the same place, right? They say, oh, he must be dead. He must be dead. But yeah, I, 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 you, know, it, it, you know, Lawrence, yeah. again, for those viewers that uh, don't know anything about the city of Lawrence, the city of Lawrence in Massachusetts, population of about 65,000. We grew up in a city. We grew up in an eight-square block of strictly Italian families. It was the little Italy, really, of the, of the, of the North Shore, that eight-square block area. And obviously, like uh, what's happened to a lot of other cities, as the years went on, uh, the city began to deteriorate. And it's only a shell of its former self now. However, for that weekend, for that weekend, it seems as though all of the old neighborhood gang, anybody that is anywhere, they all come back for that weekend, whether they live in California, in Texas, in Arizona, everybody comes back for that weekend. So. But you know, you know, Tom. Also, I, I interviewed a few people that came from Lawrence to the feast for the first time, and they also uh, said what a memorable that was the most memorable uh, day in their entire visit. Absolutely. So, and by the way, Al, you see that picture behind me on the wall? Yeah. You That's and Edna. I, yeah, Al and I picked that out. <clears throat> I picked uh, Ellen and I and Al picked that out in some little antique store in uh, in Sicily. Oh. And then we got, we got Taramina, we got it framed and matted, and it's been sitting up on that wall for about 15 years. Yeah. All right. Let me just say a quick hello to Marta. Marta is one of our guys. She's joining us from Anna. Fred McNeil is, you both are so alike. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Is that Freddie from Scotland? Yes, that's Fred from Scotland. We like Fred. So S is here. John Engelbeck, uh, child from New Jersey, Sicily West. Well, after Brooklyn and Staten Island, uh, what a great story. Uh, Robin Burrell, interested in spending a week of our trip on a beach, where would you recommend for a quiet week? Let's bring this. Quiet week, week. I would say. A quiet, well, right now it's all quiet. Yeah. Um, West Coast or East West Coast? West Coast, for sure. West or Coast. Or Santa Cruz area, south of Santa Cruz, or out San Vito Lo Capo on the West Coast. And over here, I would say Siracusa, Tarmina is always beautiful, but not quiet. Yeah, what, yeah, what about what about that nude beach that you and I used to go to? <laughs> oh, boy, here we go. Um, well, sometimes you have the British <clears throat> humor. Think Monty Python, bring on your dead. Um, and Joe Asione says, as the older generations die off, we further away from the old traditions. Sure, but I'll you're right. You, but I'll Joe's tell you right. something here. Um, you know, speaking about traditions of <clears throat> putting the tree up, here in Sicily and most of Italy, they still keep the tradition of putting up the tree after December 8th, right? Right, right. After the um, feast of something, uh, um, right. Immaculate Conception. Right. So, I mean, they do keep a lot of things still can intact. I, can I yep, tell you a quick ahead. story? Yes. My brother and I, uh, 37 years ago in the state of Maine, we experienced not the Immaculate Conception, but the Immaculate Reception, because the day after uh, Thanksgiving, 37 years ago, was when Doug Flutie threw that pass to Gerard Phelan to beat Miami. We were and sitting I, in a bar room. We were sitting in a bar room with all these manos, and my brother and I were going bananas. We had just done a ski swap, as I remember. Yeah, yeah. In Portland, right? Remember that? That was 37 Years ago, wow. time. No, crazy. That that ball. All it's right, so favorite. Tom, I want to I, I want to ask you because you've written a couple of books. One of them, bless me, um, bless sister. me, sister. Yeah. Um, where you talk a lot about growing up in Lawrence, going to school um, with the nuns. I want to ask you about some of the most memorable characters growing up. And by the way, a lot of them have come here, right? Johnny Grasso, Tom Forsese. Uh, who Peter Messina, Peter Messina, but I'm here, DeMarca. and I've had the great pleasure of meeting a lot of them. Well, so so if you if to keep everything in perspective, and I, I'm sure a lot of our listeners and viewers uh, can can uh, equate to what I'm saying, um, they, we had characters outside of our inner circle, 
um, and inside of our inner circle. In other words, characters outside of school and characters inside of school. I mean, again, you know, Al and I were real young, uh, you know, our formative years uh, growing up in, a, in an Italian city or Italian section of a city, you know, between the ages of uh, 10 and 14, you know, you, 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 you get a little mischievous. So in our neighborhood, we had characters. We had a guy called Baggy Pants. We had a guy called Charlie. We had a guy, an old man called Contact. Uh, we had we had a, another guy called Khrushchev because he looked like Khrushchev. <laughs> so, of course, what we would do as kids is we would torment these guys. So uh, Baggy Pants was, he's, he was kind of a, I guess you used to call them hobos, Al, at the time. Yeah, they were just, they were old folks. They were just, uh, they were in their 70s. And you got, you used to harass them, not me. I wouldn't. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, we would just like yell at them. Hey, they, hey, baggy pants. How are you? Because he always wore yeah. these big baggy pants. And he would chase yeah. us for five or six blocks. He would just chase us. So those are the characters outside. Characters my inside. Favorite, I'm sorry? My favorite character, Tom, was the guy. His name was Fakara. And as a matter of fact, his uh, son comes over here. The guy that did the... Uh, Old rags and bottles. He used to come by. With yeah, the I remember him, but I didn't know who he Carol. was. Yeah. Is that his I name? Him the yeah, rag he... man. Hmm? The rag man. Old and, and rags way, and bottles. And by the way, folks, when these guys bottles. talk, they still call. They still call you. <laughs> you still call your friends by their own name, right? The oh character. yeah. Yeah. I mean, we was. had we had we had a guy that uh, we had uh, uh, the rag man. We had a guy that used to come by on a little adult tricycle to shop and knives and yep. scissors uh we had a guy <laughs> we had a guy his, we had a guy his name was we used to call him pat the bug pat the pat, bug yeah. pat the bug now pat the bug he was uh he was a a, a character yeah, let's put it this way. and he would go from door to door selling his goods now where he got his goods <laughs> It's always been open for discussion, but he would sell anything from toys to glassware to pens, knock at your door. Hey, here's what I got this week. Now, I'm sure it fell off a truck somewhere, and Pat used to secure it and sell it in the neighborhood. He had a very, very lucrative business. And then we had a guy, his name was Nick the Syrian. Al, remember Nick the yeah, Syrian? Nick the Syrian, right. Nick the Syrian. He was an, he was the only Syrian guy in the neighborhood, and he would come by. Nice man, look a little, look kind of looked like Santa Claus without the white beard. Yeah. He had a he had a little black book, and yeah. he he used to he used to deliver soft goods to all the neighborhood, whether they be towels, linens, T-shirts, underwear. And yeah. my mother, he would knock at the door. My mother would put an order in, and then she'd give him two bucks. And he had a little black book with everybody's name in it. And he would put it on account. My mother used to give him two dollars a week until the to, bill was paid off. Until the bill was paid off. Until on the bill Friday night, we had this guy by the name of Mo come around taking the football betting <laughs> trip. <laughs> See, now that was Mo the bookie. We had Mo the bookie. Mo the bookie. We had the you bookie had a name for everyone. Yeah, yeah we right, had Mo. Let me, yeah. Let me just put Same it way. out there, folks. If do you have a question for Tom or for Alfred, write it in our comment, and I'll pick out a few good you questions. Know what the problem is. Wait a sec. Let me finish. Um, the rag and bone man known in Scotland, folk giving their mum's best jacket, ha ha ha, and he would give you a party balloon, says Fred McNeil. Oh, that's uh, a good so yeah, Every neighborhood had guys that sold things that fell off the truck. That's funny. That's true. <laughs> you know what the big difference is, is my brother over the decades, he kind of adapted. My brother tells me all the time, Al, you're too old school. My brother is really not, quote unquote, old school. He's no, you're school. right. He's got good visual memory of the old days, but I'm I'm kind of like stuck in that era. For, you know. Yeah, I think, and I think, I think it has. I think a, well, you know what? I think a lot of it has to do with honestly. I think a lot of it has to do with uh, you living in Sicily over the last ten or fifteen years now. How, as long as you, how long have you been there? Over twenty. Right? Yeah, when I first came here twenty years ago. Okay, but I mean, you've been there permanently the for quite. Years I've been here, just about, right. Yeah. So I think you living in Sicily has a lot to do with that, and and looking at at 
you say living in the past. It's really not living in the past because you're really living in the present in Sicily, which for some of us was the past. Right. You know what I mean? Right. There's this a lot. Is, there's, there's a lot of uh, yeah. customs and mores that uh, have yeah. that are like they were for us 50 years ago. Right. I think that, that has a lot. Yeah, to do. Right. La familia prima. That's yeah. still a, a big, big thing here in Sicily. Family, Family first. first. I uh, right. I agree with you, Tom. I mean, those memories of our eight square block neighborhood are viv vividly in in my mind. But the thing that impressed me about you is always has is that your group of friends from grammar school. You still have to mm -hmm. this day those that are alive. I've been very blessed. I've been yeah. four that that have come here as well. His I've been very blessed. From high school, yeah. his group of friends from high school, he has to this day. They're still alive, and also his group of his friends from college. Uh, he's still, you know, very good friends with them. Most of my friends back when we were younger, and by the time high school. They were either in jail or as a priest. That's about it. Or they were junkies. Yeah. Right? No, I listen. Uh, like, again, all the it's, it, well, it's Peter, Peter, Peter Gug, right? Peter Pina, Peter Peter on one hand, how many right. people? But out it's of? it's important. It's important for our viewers to understand that Al Al just made a point that is correct. However, just like every other city in the country. Lawrence yep. went downhill, just like New York City or Chicago or Boston or Roxbury, Somerville. Yep. They all went downhill. We were fortunate enough. And our, one thing about our parents, they had a little foresight. We went to college. And that was really paramount for us. It was life changing. And once we left high school, we, two things, there were two things that really come to the forefront. Number one. Al and I went to Austin Prep, a prep school, 18 miles out of the city of Lawrence. For us, that was life-changing because we weren't pigeonholed in the city. And nothing against Central Catholic High School or Lawrence High, but we were able to get out of the city and meet new people, new acquaintances, see places, talk to people we had never seen before. That's number one. And then number two was... Once we graduated from Austin Prep, we got out of the city and we never came back. And at that time, what Al is talking about is a lot of our friends, a lot of people we grew up with never got out of the city. They never went to college. And as a result, a lot of them, not some of them, a lot of them went off the rails. Let's put it that way. They, you know, they back got in the 50s, Tom, you know, 68 especially, uh, when the Vietnam War began to cook. We had a couple of fatalities. Our first two heroes who died in the war was um, Greg Kent, the great Lawrence. Yeah. And then uh, Joe Giles from Joe's Bungalow in Lawrence, right? After that, things changed, okay? Yeah, all I think people, so. Yeah, I mean, after that, things changed. All of a sudden, the people, everybody started to grow their hair long, started to smoke dope. But the big difference between Lawrence and the rest of the world was in Lawrence, they went from smoking dope to shooting heroin. Absolutely. They miss all the drugs in between. Absolutely. Right? And you're right. You're right. It's and very sad. Big, and we, again, we were very fortunate because we never got yeah. caught up in that. And I think another thing for me, and I think for you too, Al, I think playing sports was was yeah. very, yeah. very crucial in uh, how we shaped our lives. Because I went on, Al went on to play football at Boston College for a while, and I went on to become probably the greatest wide receiver in the history of St. Francis College, now the University of New England. So. Yeah, yeah. Let right. me let me ask you this. You, you know, you talk about your parents making um good decisions. <laughs> Tom, I don't know who dropped the winning touchdown pad. Oh, don't start. Champions don't start. Game. Don't start. Uh, uh, Al, I wasn't focused. I wasn't focused. Yeah. What do you want? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Leave a question if you want to ask Tom or Alfred anything. Okay, I want to ask you about uh your sauce. Okay, because I've heard you guys discuss your sauce. And do you remember Ma put this in there when you guys are talking on the phone? No, Ma never put that in there. Oh, she always put that in there. So I want to hear your version. My of your sauce. My, okay, and I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. You can speak to anybody who has ever tasted my sauce. Now, I'm not talking my marinara. I'm talking my sugu, my meat yeah. sauce. That's that's my key. I want to know. Basic ingredients, because when Alfred makes it, you know, it sometimes changes. There's the original, 
And then my mom put sometimes red wine, sometimes she didn't, sometimes she put onion, but I want to hear your version. I, I'm really not at liberty to share it. I will, I will. Family uh, secret, it, come on. It, it's, uh, you know what the key is? I'll tell you what the key is. The key to a really great meat sauce is a tremendous amount of basil, fresh basil, and a little bit of sugar. Not red wine, sugar. Not red wine. I know people think that's blasphemous. They think I'm a Nazi. But point being is that the sugar does a lot of different things. It cuts the acidity of the sauce, but it adds just a little sweetness. Now, you take that, then you prepare your meat sauce. And what I put in my meat sauce, I put everything but the kitchen sick in. Wait a second. You, you stole that line. We said that exact same thing in our video, right? <laughs> we said that. We put everything in there but the kitchen sink. For exactly meat, I use, I use a combination. For my meatballs, I usually use a combination of pork and beef. Combine them, ground pork, ground beef. Make my meatballs per my mother and my grandmother's recipe. And... Another key is you. it's really important to brown everything before you drop it in the sauce. And the reason that you brown, especially the meatballs, because it gives the meatballs some substance so they don't break apart in, in the sauce. Yeah. So I brown meatballs. Believe it or not, I get the bone-in spare ribs, bone-in spare ribs, yeah. baby back, a ton of them. Brown them, drop those in. In the sauce, chicken thighs, skinless, wow. skinless chicken thighs. Brown them really nicely. Drop them in. Obviously, sausage. I like to put sweet sausage, not hot sausage, in my pot in my sauce. Brown some sausage, and then the other thing I do is I get uh, veal, really? chunks chunks of veal, chunks of veal. Cut it up. Almost they look like steak tips. Brown those up, throw those in the sauce. Now, what do you use for the sauce? Do you use the passata? Do you make your you make it fresh from tomato? I, I don't use passata yeah. because Al, I, I, Al, you can't find it here except for Borelli's, and I've never tried it. So you know what I use? Believe it or not, pastini. Pastini. I, I use pastini. <laughs> and I, I thought you were saying hunts. No, no, I use Why pastini. Use Why do you use hunts? I, I know that. And, did he add, uh, and, and how about red wine? You put red wine? Never, in? never, never. Because what I do with my sauce, but I, let me tell you what the key though is to the flavor. I, you know, my sauce is, is a basic sauce, but it's very good because I put sugar in it. Basil, sugar, extra virgin olive oil. I chop up a couple of cloves of garlic. I chop chop up a little piece of onion. Throw that all in some uh, some you know some Italian seasoning, some oregano, salt and pepper, and let it simmer. But before I turn it on. I taste it cold. I uh, taste my sauce cold. That's if, interesting. If it tastes good cold, it's going to taste spectacular when it's warm. Well, how, much the, is that, how much does that pot cost you to make? It's a, lot, like a lot. A lot. What I do, Al, what I do is I make, I make, here's what I do. I make a big pot. But the oh, key, the entire key, the key to the sauce is you let it simmer for four or five hours. Wow. You, sh you shut it that. off. You shut it off. You keep stirring it. You shut it off, right? And then you let it cool and you refrigerate it overnight. You do not eat it the same day you make it. How do you discipline yeah, my yourself used to, my not to? Because that. my mother, my mother gave me that piece of advice yeah. years ago and I said, "Jesus Christ, you're right. Everything if you let it sit overnight in the fridge, the meat flavors get into the sauce. It all comes together. Well, everything, everything tastes the, better the second even day. Soup sure. did, oh, even yeah. soups are better. Yeah. Right. Right. Let me, let me so the next day, so the next yeah. day, I okay. take it out. I get it going nice and simmering. Now, the other key is this. I use a different kind of pasta. But before I serve, I take all of the meat out of the yeah. pot. And I put it on a big platter. This way, because by the time you you simmer it, like for instance, the spare ribs, they're all off falling off the bone. So I mm. scoop out all of the bones, discard the bones, and then all of the meat I put in a big platter. 
Now, what do I use for pasta? What I don't do you use. I don't use. I don't use ziti. I don't use rigatoni. I use cavatelli. Cavatelli. I, is small I I use the small yeah. pastas that have ricotta cheese in them. Oh wow, that's a rich meal. A very rich meal, and I that's what I use. Then I serve the plates individually. What I do is I just put the sauce on the pasta, and then we pass the platter around the table, and you can take whatever meat you want. And you eat, you always serve with a tablespoon, a fork, and a knife. The pasta you eat with a spoon, because they're little round cavatellis, oh, yeah. and then and then the, the, the meat you can eat with a with a with a knife or a, or a fork uh, a knife and a fork. So All basically, right, that's, me, a, that's a, a primo things. and a secundo. That's a first and a second course. Pretty yeah. much. It's, 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 honestly, it's, Al, it's so rich that, I mean, I never, ever, I mean, mom used to. I never serve a second course. All we serve with that is the meal and a salad, a nice salad. That that's sounds it. great. Yeah. All right, let's read a couple of these. Enzo S. marinara sauce is the best basic ingredients, garlic, onions, Fresh basil, a little sugar, and a little black pepper and a little salt. Is that your perfect? perfect. Exactly I that on. I don't use onions in my marinara sauce. Yeah, but you use. What do you use? Do you use crushed tomatoes and all that stuff? No, I use I, no, I use posata. For marinara, you put in the fresh tomatoes. Some, I, I make with the fresh tomatoes. No, I mean. uh, Maria says I skip the sugar and grate a carrot like my non night used yeah, to. Yeah, that's another. Maria, I've, never I've never tried that. I've never tried that. Uh, Mid uh, Major Me says, "No way, you guys are brothers." Uh, Cavatelli. My mother used to say that all the time. Maybe she's onto something there, huh? Hey, before I want to say, wait something, a second, wait let a me finish. Yeah, let's finish. One of my sister Anna, Anna, we love you. How do you I know she's watching? Here. She's watching. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, honey. What's I invited her. I hope she's here. Um, Jim Ingrid says, "Pork gets eaten with fingers." Yes. yes. That's the best. Uh, put a lot of meat in there. That makes it the most tasty. Carmen Termini is in the house. For Al, how does the sugo differ in Sicily from how you grew up? There's no meat like that. Very, very rarely do you well, find... We don't even have cows in Sicily. No, no. You know, <laughs> look, at for Christmas party two years ago, I made, a, I made exactly what you're, you're saying, except I put in only meatballs and, and sausage, sausage, right? And I sh a lot of them, okay? People, People went here and went freaking nuts. They were like, wow, what is this? They don't, they don't do that. When the pasta that. Was you know what you can do? One of, the, one of the things that I do sometimes, uh, Esther, is sometimes I'll take two or three meatballs, crush them up, brown them, and throw them in loose so that the sauce has is like a meat sauce more besides. Meat, more meat flavor. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I want to ask, can I ask wait a, a question second. About Marta, this? Marta from Anna says, uh, I agree, sugar in the sauce reduces acidity. We always prepare sauce in that way. Yeah. So, Tom, there you go. Someone from Sicily. Uh, I have, I have on two that. questions to ask you, Tom, okay, about this food thing, okay? Number one, what's your opinion of tripe? Uh, I, I, I like tripe. Dad, you uh, I, love that. I, I haven't had tripe in years. And the only reason being is because uh, at St. Alfio, uh, Frank Babagallo, one, one, one night a, uh, a year, he, we have a tripe night at the Society. But I'm in Florida, and Ellen would probably shoot me if I ever brought it home to try to make myself. Well, that's, made, that's made with the intestines of the animal, right? The a veal. Yeah, it's made, it's made with the cow intestines. Cow intestines, okay. Dad used to love that. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can, you can, it's, it's got a lot of uses too. I mean, you can, you can eat it. Uh, you can use it as a suction cup, uh, <laughs> you know, to put your soap on in your, in your bathtub. Yeah. All kinds of cool stuff you can do with it. Okay, wait, man, one more question to ask him. What about chicken feet? Again, Al, that was something that, uh, Remember? Uh, yeah. well, th there was something that, that, that was made Zina used to eat by them. our grandmother. And I used to taste them, but I wasn't crazy about them. But I'll tell you what I, I used to like. And I want to ask you guys a question. Yeah. Do they make zuzu in Sicily? Yes. 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 You could buy right and at the now, supermarket. Yeah. And now I, I, I liked it. The it's fall good. and winter are the times that they start. She likes it. I never liked mm -hmm. it in the States. Or I, I always it. liked it. And, and the other thing I liked, I liked, I was a big pig's feet guy, too. Can uh -huh. I tell you pig's something, feet. something yeah. really interesting, Tommy? And, you know, this is something 
uh, that from the second that I landed here and was here my first year, something resonated with me for, with Sicily. And one of the things is a lot of our foods are very similar. My grandmother put chicken's feet in every single soup. Uh, you know, she bought all parts of chicken. Zuzu, I thought was totally a Hungarian thing and it was very happy to see it here. I mean, a lot of the foods and things are very similar. I think, I think that whole European thing. What's that? I said, I think, I think that you'll find that all through Europe. And I think there's a lot of similarities. They're just little variations of the same food. Yeah. Yeah. Except if you go to Palermo, the most popular street food, Tom, is boiled, boiled veal spleen. First it's fried and then it's boiled in lard and, and it's put in two pieces of bread. You know, I really like only seeing half your face, Al. <laughs> yeah, we have right, to get, now, one, of those, have now, to get now. one of those those screens. Now you're in. I'm out. Okay, wait. Oh, if you, 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 I love that. That, that, that. I love what you're doing. <laughs> He's unbelievable. Right, now listen to me, Tommy. So yes. um, I want to hear about some of your memories of Christmas at, in your household on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Alfred has this great story. He's been di waiting, dying to tell you about when. Your dad went to get the Christmas tree, but I want to hear about some of your. Well, that was memories. one. That was one of the stories, but I'll let Al, Al tell that. Our Christmas. You ever see that movie, uh, A Christmas Story? Yeah. Okay. That that was like kind of like our Christmas. Like we had this big. My father used to come home, and now you can tell the story about the cutting of it. But we used to have this gigantic Christmas tree, and we always had at the time colored lights on it. And there would be more tinsel on that tree than you could find uh, in at United Steel. I mean, it was like there was so much. Twelve boxes every year. I'm sorry. He used to buy twelve boxes of tinsel. Right. The red one. The red. And then, one. and then we'd have a star on. But I remember we had this big old base of a Christmas tree that had four lights in it that was probably fifty years old, and finally. I'll never forget this. One day, we were sitting in the living room. We had a big living room, and the TV room was on the opposite side from the, where the tree was. And I remember looking over, and the Christmas tree was in flames. Uh, <laughs> remember that, Al? <laughs> because the base finally short-circuited, and the bottom of the tree was on fire. So Sonny jumped up and obviously unplugged it, put the fire out. And we wound up that year with, I don't think any, I don't think he ever replaced the base. We had no lights on that tree, I think, but I could be wrong on that. But yeah, you know, there's one, one, one thing I remember about our trees with him was he'd always cut the top off and make it flat. Right. Uh, unfortunately, but instead of the he, bottom, he would cut the top. He would cut the top. Mine and, and not only that, but the trees were so big that the top that he cut off you could literally use as another, another tree. tree. Yeah, we used to use it for branches around the houses. Actually. Correct. My mother used to use it for branches. I then the other thing we had, we had one of those, uh, uh, Esther, and I'm sure a lot of people did. We had another room, and a lot of people used to have those fake silver trees, and then you'd buy the little round uh, gizmo that would spin around with all the different colors on it. Fake colors. Fake colors. And yeah. my mother had that tree, and she used to hang our Christmas cards on that tree. Remember that? <laughs> right? All right. Can we tell a Christmas tree story Okay, now? go ahead. All right. And get out of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Tom. Tom, do you remember the time, I'm sure you do, when Dad was living in Salisbury with Ma, and he came home with a, a Christmas tree, an artificial tree that... <laughs> I do. The freaking thing should have cost three hundred dollars. It was like completely decked out. With by the time you put all the ornaments on, on no, it. no, no, you're wrong. You're, you're getting that story yeah, wrong. Go ahead. That. All right. So the story I got was that he had went into Walmart, and the tree was on display. All Correct. Day, right. Correct. And it said, on sale, sixty five dollars. Right. So Santos went up to the manager. He says, "You know, back, please, you know, pack that tree up. Uh, it looks beautiful." So the guy said, well, you know, it's just for the tree. So my father says, no, it's not. It says, you know, whole tree, 65. Exactly, pounds. exactly. So, so he put on a freaking scene, I understand. And he came home with the lights, the ball. There must have been a hundred. But, but, but hold on. Here's what you're missing. And you're right. The story is correct, except for 
people have to clearly understand that they did not take the, the decorations off of the tree. They left the decorations on the tree and shrunk wrapped the tree. And that's <laughs> like the whole the whole tree in the vehicle with the decorations still on it. Oh, Carried it into the house with all the decorations on it, put it in the basin, voila. That guy, that guy went to uh, Walmart every day at six o'clock to buy something. I, I remember he used to love that store. God rest yeah. his soul. All right, yeah. All right let me do. A, a, let's do a few more minutes. If you guys have any questions for Tom or Alfred, leave us a comment. Vivian C says fiber optic tree. That's funny. What's that? <laughs> we fiber have one. Up. We have we one. We do. That's what we have, Viv. Uh, hey, you guys. We posted a video on Yumi and Sicily on our tree yesterday. So that's on Facebook. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get notified when we go live or when we upload a video. And we've got a video, by the way, coming to you this week on Trapani, right? Yep. All right. I want to thank, I wanna thank my minutes. brother. Wait, can I, give a, can I give a plug to the Sicilian? Wait a minute. I was going to introduce yes, plug. Yes, wait. Oh, go okay. Ahead. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm impressed. Brother, yeah, we haven't spoken anything about what my who, who my brother is and accomplished whatever. I I said at the very beginning, well, co-host of the shh, Sicilian shh, Corner. Shh, shh, and <laughs> You're <laughs> off, baby. <laughs> Listen, okay? My brother Tommy is a published author, okay? He's an expert, considers to be one of the biggest experts in the nation on collectible baseball cards. He's been the author of four books or five, I'm not sure. Six. A hilarious <laughs> book about Six. growing up in a parochial school. It's hilarious. called uh, Bless Me, Sis Sister. Yeah. And he also, besides, and this is all in addition to being a grandfather of seven kids, uh, seven grandkids. And most important thing I would say that he's got his, he's kept the Sicilian tradition alive in the city of Lawrence for how many years, Tom? 17, 20 years now? With the, the show? Season? Yeah. Uh, next Friday is our 20th anniversary. 20, 20 years. Sicilian Corner, yep. Fridays at 11 o'clock, right? On Facebook. So make sure you check out. Yeah, yeah, we're on we're on Facebook Live on the Sicilian Corner Facebook page. And we're also up in the Boston area on WCAP. Uh, the signal goes from downtown Boston up to Concord, New Hampshire. But I also want to give a plug to I, this. I also co-host a national show with the Red Sox Hall of Famer Rico Petroselli. Uh, every Wednesday night, it's called the Great American Collectible Show. If you're a baseball, if you're a collectibles freak, it's it's a fun show. I think you guys froze. Like we had some. Uh, looks like we had. Oh, back. Yeah, what back. happened Sorry. was we had a big, a big thunder and lightning just. Well, hit you know, I, you know, I just I, plus I refreshed, which made it well. So. Oh, good. Okay. okay. So why don't you finish? Why don't you finish uh, telling us uh, how we can get a hold of you? Well, if you want to get a copy of Bless Me, Sister, or one of the seven books that we wrote, you can go to TomZappalaMedia.com, order it online. Uh, Bless Me, Sister is kind of a fun book. Uh, everybody can relate to it. It's just. Growing up in an Italian neighborhood, going to an Italian grammar school, being taught by Irish nuns. So you can imagine what some of the things that transpired there. And that's about it. Sicilian Corner every week. And uh, that's it. Thanks Wait, for having me, guys. The Great American Baseball Collectibles Show, too. The Great American Collectibles Show, we air every Wednesday night uh, on Facebook, uh, on 50 different platforms. I co-host a show uh, every Wednesday night with former Red Sox Hall of Fame, well, Red Sox Hall of Famer, uh, Rico Petroselli. Rico is a very close, dear friend. We have a blast together. And the show's doing well. It's doing, it's a nation, it's the number one uh, sports collectible show on the internet. So we're pretty, we're pretty right, fortunate. If somebody has, if somebody has a, 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 a rare baseball card or finds a dear 
uncle's box with a bunch of cards. Can they contact you? you can Absolutely. Them. Yeah, you can you can contact me, go through Tom Zappler Media, email me, and I'll help you out uh, on getting it appraised, tell you what it, I think it's worth. And if you're looking to sell it, I can get you through the proper avenues uh, to, to sell it. Uh, our biggest sponsors uh, of the show are the biggest auction houses and most uh, a, a, with the best reputations in the country. So, Tom, I want to personally thank you for introducing me to your brother in 2000. Are, are, are you kidding me? You should be getting my condolences. And and you, seven years later, our first guest. Everything goes around in a Whole circle. Cycle. Great. Thank uh, you so much, Tom. And thank thanks you for watching. Tommy, great job. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Yeah. And happy, happy holidays to everyone. Take care. Arrivederci.